when I go down the road in this 1968 F100, I have a little play in the steering wheel. As I'm driving, I have to continually adjust just a little bit. You can see how much slack there is. And that's not real unusual in old trucks. But I'm going to see if I can remove some of this. I don't care for it when old trucks fall on me. So I block it up to where that's nearly impossible. I use uh, good flat wider blocks. I, I think these work better than uh, jack stands when you're working out in the dirt. I also block a tire so that the truck can't roll. I'm feeling the wheel bearing play and I may adjust that. With the wheel off the ground I can rock it. I, I can feel the wheel bearings. Okay, I I feel movement. I don't know if you can see this in the camera, but not only do I feel it, but I hear it. I hear a little thumping. So I've got a little bit of wheel bearing play that I'll be able to adjust out here. Removing the hub's cap. Just trying to straighten out this cutter key to where I can pull it out. This is a, a lock washer, or a lock, yeah, I guess you'd call it a nut. Sometimes they're called a, a castle nut or a castle washer. And the idea is where the cotter key goes in, it also goes through one of these notches, and that holds this nut from uh, turning after you've adjusted the wheel bearing. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove the wheel and take a look at the brakes while I'm doing this just just so that I know what kind of shape the brakes are in I'm going to see if the wheel will come off without having to back off the brake shoes sometimes I get lucky Oops. This uh, bearing that I just dropped in the dirt is a cone bearing. You see how this diameter is smaller than this diameter. And the one on the bearing on the other side of the hub faces this way. And both of these bearings sit in tapered races. So as the bearings are pushed together towards each other with that nut that I just removed from here it it removes the wheel bearing play and that, that's that's old school technology these tapered bearings were used on a lot of rear wheel drive vehicles uh, years ago I got lucky. This is 
use the other wheel bearing. I have to remove this seal to get the bearing out. Both of these bearings had plenty of grease on them. They look like they're in pretty good shape. My brake drum is also in great shape. When the brake pads press into the drum through use, they tend to wear into the drum and so there's a, a shoulder that's built it, that is carved out of the drum and that's why it's sometimes you have to back the brake shoes off to get the drum off but these are in great shape uh, there's no uh, ridge here or shoulder here from where there's a lot of miles left on, on this I don't remember when I did work on this thing last I can see that these studs the back end of the the studs for removing the tire if you have a flat tire these have been replaced I remember pounding those in yeah that was I'm gonna I'm I'm thinking this was like six eight years ago but I'm liking what I see so far I'll get that seal out of there I'm taking the bearings out just so that I can repack them I, I just won't remove a wheel without servicing the bearings if I can I've got a replacement seal for this so if I can just get it out of there enough there we go so this is a seal I'm gonna keep this and use it as a driver to punch in the replacement seal this is the inner cone bearing plenty of grease that's looking good notice I didn't drop this one in the grass That's the bearing race right here. I better be careful. I won't be able to turn my camera off. I'm going to turn it off now. With a, I got one clean finger here, my pinky. This is how I pack a bearing. I'm sure there's different techniques. I'll just wipe off most of the old grease. I don't want to use brake cleaner or a solvent on the bearings. That actually interferes with the method that I use to um, pack a bearing. I want to push the old grease out with uh, new grease so I just get some grease put it in the palm of my hand and the idea is to just literally pack the bearing with grease and as I press the bearing into my palm you'll see the old grease start to emerge on top see how it's pushing out here and I'll usually wipe out the old grease and throw it away and the stuff that's on the inside is from from my palm so you can see how it's the old grease is coming up out of the bearing the grease is packing between the two bearing races the inner and the outer and between the rollers and I do this the same thing for roller bearings, regular round bearings, 
tapered bearings, square cut bearings. Same principle. The bearings nowadays, though, are usually sealed. There's no uh, maintenance required. You you just can't maintain them. You just throw them away once once they're dry. Or actually, I've seen people uh, inject grease into the rubber seals of the newer bearings, but I don't know about that. I think I'll just replace the newer bearings. So I've gone all the way around and pressed in new grease. And I'll put the bearing back in about like this. I, I still want to have a coat of grease around it. And I'll do this smaller bearing the same way. Kind of fun. And we'll put this one back in about like this. Nice liberal coat of grease around it. And this is good grease. It doesn't get hot and get soft and melt. You don't want to grease in your anywhere near your brakes. It's going to break down and uh, turn into oil and coat your brake shoes or rotors or brake drums or whatever the the brake system needs friction that's how it works and you don't want any kind of a oil product messing with that friction Just use a piece of clean sandpaper. Give it a last dusting here. Boy, these shoes are in great shape. Lots of meat left. You can see the uh, wheel, the brake cylinder here has no signs of fluid seeping out of it. If, if this was moist, you know, a different uh, shade than the rest of it, I would pull these off and rebuild them. Just knocking the glaze off these shoes. doesn't take much that's about all I need to do Let's 
see, I'll put the bearing back in here. The old seal, the pack bearing. Now I was going to drive in my new seal with the uh, old bearing, but I got to looking at the way they're made. This is all flat metal here. You can see there's a lip here that needs to mate with this surface. So I'm going to put it right there in place. Try to get it so it's level. I'm going to try a different technique this time. Let's see how this... This is a custom seal installer here. Ah, Got to get it right there. <coughs> That's it. Might just do a little tapping here. Yeah, it's in. And let's see if I can get this wheel back in place now. So what I want to do here is make sure that the axle is centered in the uh, bearing. I want to be careful not to damage the inside of the seal with the threaded end of that axle. And the shoes need to be lined up with the inside of the, the drum. And the way I'm going to accomplish that is to set this in place about where I think it goes. And I'm going to come around and look from the inside and just make sure everything's lined up before I try to get you it in place. So I can see that my wheel is too high. It's higher than the axle on the shoes. So I need a smaller block down here. That's inch and a half. I'll see if I can find about a three quarter inch block. That's pretty close. I think I'll see if I can get you it on there now. <laughs> Backing off the brake shoes is probably the proper way to do it, but I'm a lazy man. What can I say? This is the, I don't know, this might be called a thrust washer or a pressure washer. See how it's got a little nipple right here? Well, that fits in this groove on top of the axle. That's to prevent this from spinning. It stays in place as you, as you uh, apply pressure to the bearings with the adjuster nut here. All right, so you can see there's a lot of play in the bearing there. And I've seen old trucks like this with about that much slack. These uh, cone bearings need to be maintained. They just need to be, they wear, the clearances increase. And as long as they're still rolling well and not getting hot, you can just keep servicing it. So there's a lot less play now, but I can see grease squishing right there. I can hear it too. That's about the way it was when I 
started this. So I'm gonna take all the slack out with my left hand. I'm kind of wiggling the wheel here. Still got a little slack. Still got a little. Yeah. And there may be a torque spec on this, I don't know. Maybe a few pounds or something. But the idea is to take all, or most of the slack out. And I can't feel the slack down here. I need the leverage of my hands around the tire to feel it. And the idea is to remove almost all of the slack. I would rather have a little bit of slack than none. Because I just don't want my old bearings getting hot. I'm going to over tighten them. Over tighten the uh, bearing. Just so I know that when it... Okay. There the... I hear the bearing drag. Well, looks like this tired old truck is just going to have a little play. That's not bad. I can live with that. And, you know, the, the next time I get online and am ordering parts, I'll probably get a bearing kit. Now that I know this bearing is uh, worn to the point that it probably should be replaced. I'm going to call that good. Normally I don't use a tool to snug it up. I, I haven't tightened it very much I and mean, it's just that tight. That's about the best I'm going to get it. Okay, the, now the, the uh, castle nut or lock nut the idea is to uh, locate your hole in the axle here where the cotter key goes and position this so that it'll let the key go in and and these are staggered in relationship to these notches these folds that go around the nut so you just have to uh, Try different positions. There it is. There's different ways to bend these cotter keys, lock keys, whatever you want to call it. I don't uh, get too carried away. I just want to make sure that the key is not going to come out. So I just do something about like that. The only thing. I have to the only thing that I have to uh, take care for is that the cotter key is not going to hit my uh, uh, hubcap and that's it I service the right front wheel Oh, needs a tap right there. There we go. And uh, 
I've already got the other side done. So I'm going to uh, file the points, set the timing, and my truck will be ready for the uh, summer frolic that I have planned for it. Uh, thanks for watching the video. Hope things are going well for you. Take care.